Welcome to this Giftworks video. My name is Steve Faithful, and in this video, I want to show you a couple ways that you can make global or bulk or batch changes to donors that are within Giftworks without having to go in and manually change every donor one at a time. A couple of features that I want to show you. The first one I'm going to show you is what we call our smart updates. And to do that, I'm going to start by looking at a smart list. So I'm going to bring up a smart list of my board members. In this case now, I only have nine, but if I needed to make changes to each one of these, maybe I needed to add a task for each one of them or maybe change their status. Now, it wouldn't be that difficult for nine of them to go through and right-click and say edit donor and modify the donor and go on my way. And Nine of them would probably just take me a few minutes, but if I had 90 or 900, that would be a different story. So in this case, I'm gonna just work with my nine but understand that this applies for as many that you have in a smart list. So if I need to make a change, one of the features that we offer is what we call a smart update. Now if you're using a version prior to Giftworks 2012, then it might be called update all items in this list. But in this case, I'm using Giftworks 2012 and it's called a smart update. So I'm going to uh, click on the left on smart, run a smart update and the first thing I'll see is a list of options of what I want to do to this list of donors. In this case, let's pretend that I want to add a task for them. So perhaps I just need to add a task to uh, make a follow-up phone call about a campaign that they're working on. So I'm going to click on add a task and there's a whole bunch of options. I could add or remove people from groups, add or remove donors from mailing lists, change statuses, categories, member since, renewal dates, etc. And I can go through and do that. And in this case, I'm just going to add a task for every one of these donors. So I'm going to click on Next, and it's going to ask me to define the task. I'm going to say a follow-up phone call, and I'll just say call about the campaign. And I'm going to put it on mm, for Monday the 12th, let's say. And I'm going to uh, click on Add a Task. Now it's going to go through and say, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to add a task now for all of those nine uh, me uh, board members. When I'm done, I can click on Finish. Now if I go back to my list of board members, so I'll go to my smart list, I'll go to my board members, and now actually I can uh, I could do a number of things. I can double click here and I can see under notes, tasks, and files that I have this follow-up phone call campaign on the 12th. And if I go over to my home page, I'll actually see that coming up on the 12th, I'll have follow-up phone calls for all of these donors. So that was easy. Went through and in one of a couple clicks, I was just added a uh, task for all these nine uh, board members. And uh, so that's one way using smart updates and it starts with a smart list. The second way I can do it is by using our export and import capabilities that are built within Giftworks. So if I'm looking at a smart update, let's say I'm looking at my board members and I realize that if I go over to smart update, I, I look down this list and I don't see something that I'm looking for. Another way I could do it is I can also export this information out of Giftworks maybe modify it, modify this information in something like Excel, and then re-import it back into Giftworks. And so I'm going to do that real quick, and I'm going to click on the Customize because there's a couple steps that are really important. One of the things you're going to want to do is, is modify the smart list to make sure that you include this ID column. The ID column is, the, is, Giftworks, is Giftworks, the unique identifier within Giftworks for this donor. And that's going to be real important when we go to re-import this donor back in, um, it's going to use that ID to match up against uh, this, uh, this specific donor to make sure we're updating the exact donor that we want to update. So I'm going to go through and let's just say I'm going to, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to include the status column. So I'll find the status column down here. Did I miss it? No. There we go. Status column right there. And I'm going to click OK. So now I see the status. And they're all active donor, pledging donor, et cetera. And I have different statuses. And I'm going to, now that I have the ID column and I have the status field, I'm going to export this list and save it to a file. And I'll just call this My Updates. And I'm going to click on Finish. And it's going to export that to an Excel file. Now, I'm using status. Status is one of the uh, smart updates. So uh, there's uh, certainly other options that you can do as well. Um, uh, make sure that you use smart updates where you can, and if you can't use it, you use something else. So actually, why don't I do that? Why don't I do something different instead of status? Let's say, let's use something that's a little bit more difficult, and I'm going to use the, I'm going to modify the email. And I'm going to include phone as well, because 
Uh, phone and email are a little bit more, uh, they're, they're not included in smart updates, and you want to make sure there's a couple rules I can talk about when doing uh, addresses, phones, and emails as well. So we'll do a couple things in here. We'll modify some phones, some emails, and some statuses. That way we can kind of see GifWorks at work. So once I've got all my fields, making sure that I include this ID column, really important, um, then I'm going to, uh, and the fields that I want to modify, I'm going to then export this. So let me export it again. We'll overwrite my updates. I'm going to overwrite the one I just did. So now I have an Excel file that contains all this information. Let's go open it now in Excel. I'm going to open up an Excel and I'm going to bring up my updates. And we're going to see the information that I just exported, including the phone, the email, and so on. So a couple changes we'll make first. First, let's change the status. And we're going to change the status of all these to uh, we'll just call it the updated status. Now this is not a great status and so understand that you'd probably want to set it to a better status than that, but just for the sake of uh, reviewing and seeing what's being changed, I'm going to change it to the status of updated, and I'm going to do it right here in Excel. Um, so we've exported our this uh, spreadsheet. We're going to make some changes here, and then in a few moments, we're going to re-import it back into Giftworks and update the information. A couple things I'm also going to change. Let's change some phone numbers and some email addresses. So first thing for the uh, Acme Superdog Apparel Company, where we'll change the phone number and email, and we'll do the same for the Ajax Corporation. So I'm going to come in, and one of the really important things is not to modify this phone name. You must in include the phone name if you want to update the phone number, and the email name if you want to update the email address. Giftworks, when, when we re-import this back in, Giftworks is going to look to see if there's a phone that already exists with this name, and if so, it will update it to this information. So let's do this. I'm going to do it to 717-555-1. 111 and I'm going to do the next one down below to 717-555-2222. So you'll see that we've updated the phone, the business phone for each of those. I'm also going to do the email and I'm just going to say that I'm going to do this one at one.com. Now in my Excel it's it's uh, it disappeared just a little bit because it's uh, just the way the formatting is. Actually I'm going to highlight this and I'm just going to go under format, oop, edit clear formats that way just changes how things look and I can I can see it now so great I'm also going to change this to two at two dot com they're not great email addresses so bear with that so we have uh, the email addresses updated and the phones updated really important if also if I was updating the address I would make want to make sure that I exported the address name just like I did with phone name and email name giftworks will look and uh, it will try to match up the if it if it finds another address phone or email with the same uh, name it's going to update it if it doesn't find one or you don't map one it's going to add another one uh, and I'll talk more about that when we go and import it so I've gone through I'm going to just remove these hyperlinks and so now we've got uh, the the business phone updated and the uh, emails updated as well and then we updated the status for all these so we've made some changes now I could go through and I could have somebody whether they're doing a phone -a -thon or whatever they might be doing updating all this information and when I'm ready we're gonna import it back in so I'm gonna save the changes I made and now we're ready to go back to giftworks go to my settings area go to database files and maintenance and import and I'm gonna import a file we're gonna import the file that we just modified so it's an Excel file I'm gonna find the import file on my documents, my updates, there's the file that I'm up using to update. You notice it has all the information including the changes that we just made, 111, and the different email addresses. Click on next. Really important part right now is when we're going to go onto this matching existing donors area. This is where we're going to define what we're going to be updating or what fields we're going to be using to ensure that we're going to match against the existing donors in Giftworks. Now, Letting Giftworks decide, we'll simply use the name information, first, middle, last, and company name, all those four fields together to try to match up the donors that are in your source import file with donors that already exist in Giftworks. Now, that's not what we want to do today because we're going to choose the field that we want to use for matching. In this case, I know that the ID field in my import file, in my Excel file, should match up to the donor ID that's within Giftworks. What that's going to do is ensure that every time I go to update information or I'm bringing information in for my spreadsheet, it's going to match up the ID to the donor ID that's within Giftworks. And that's going to ensure that I'm updating the correct donor. 
Now, I'm going to use this option below here. This actually says, if a matching donor is not found, Giftworks should, in this case, it says add a donor, but I'm going to change it to ignore the row of import data. That's because with the way I've done it, I know that every donor that was exported um, is going to be matching up to an existing donor within Giftworks. And so if there, there's not going, I do not expect to find any uh, donors that, have, that will not have a match. They all will have a match, and so um, I'm just telling Giftworks, if you happen to find one, ignore it. I know that I'm not going to find one. And so that way, this is one of the most critical parts of ensuring that you're updating the correct donor within Giftworks. If I just use let Giftworks decide, then it would try to match up based on name information. And because names can be the same, you can have two Bob Smiths or two Mary Jones, then uh, that may not be reliable in terms of updating my information. And especially because I exported it from Giftworks, I know I have an identif identifier that, will, uh, that is going to guarantee me the correct match to the existing donor within Giftworks. So I'm going to click on Next. And now I'm going to make sure I map the fields appropriately. Now I'm going to map, uh, in, the, in terms of this ID field, I don't need to map it um, because I know that uh, I, I know that it's already been taken care of on my previous screen. I don't even need to map my display name. The only ones I'm going to map are the ones of the fields that have had some changes. So I know I didn't change any address. I know I didn't change the city state. But I know I did, and I'm going to make sure that under my donor, uh, my phone, I'm going to say for my, I'm just going to call it my home phone name. Uh, So if you happen to be updating a phone, just make sure that actually, even though we're updating a business phone, well, you can actually pick any of the fields that you want in terms of, you can just either pick home phone or mobile phone or business phone. As long as you match up the phone name field, uh, and then if you pick up, in this case I picked home phone name, even though it's a business phone, I'm just, met, I'm just using one of the phone number positions really, or the phone numbers that are available. And as long as now, for this one, I pick the, the home phone, as long as I have that kind of matching pair, it's going to update the, whatever business phone it finds with the, with the appropriate uh, business number. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for email, and for email it's a little bit more straightforward. Just click on, uh, in this case, address, email address one name, and then email address under email address one. So you see these kind of matching pairs, home phone name, home phone, email address one name, and email address. And don't forget, even though phones, it says home phone, just make sure you pick an appropriate, uh, a matching pair. So if you pick the business phone name field, pick the business phone. So any one of those is going to work to make sure you update this phone, this phone ad appropriately. And then for the status, I'm going to go ahead and pick under the, uh, under donor details, I'm going to pick the status field. And then I'm going to ignore all the other fields. So I'm only mapping the fields that I'm updating. Uh, so in this case, we're just updating the uh, phone and the email and the status, making sure that, and if I was including the address, I would want to make sure I would do that too. If you want to update the address, make sure you include the address name, and then you can update those address fields, and it will update the appropriate existing address. So once I get all that set, I can click on Next, make sure there's no errors or warnings in my mappings. Then run a quick test import, and you'll see it goes through. You'll notice here it's showing under the Giftworks information, it's showing a number, which is really the ID or the identifier for that donor. You won't see the name, but you'll see the, the donor's ID. And then when you're ready, you can click on Complete Import. And I'm going to go through, and now at the bottom, after it's completed, it's running a little check. At the bottom here, you'll see it says it found number of rows, nine row, process nine rows, and yet you'll see it updated nine rows. It didn't add any new ones because uh, we weren't expecting to. It updated those nine. Now I'm going to click on Done, and we're going to head over to our Smart List, and we're going to bring up our board members. Now if everything went right, and if I bring up the Ac Acme Superdog Apparel, if I go under the, uh, under the contact info, I should see that their business phone has been, have, has been updated to 555-1111. Their business email is one at one. And their status, if I scroll down under, actually under details, and I'll see status is updated. So, and that's great. And I should see, the, I should see different results for the Ajax Corporation, which under contact info, I should see 555-2222 for the phone number and 2 at 2.com for the email. And then our details, I should, should see the same, same status. So that's a really quick way of understanding how you can make global or batch or bulk changes to your donors. You can either use smart updates. Remember, starting from a smart list, identifying your specific smart list, and clicking on the smart updates on the left-hand side, and then choosing the appropriate smart, list, uh, smart update that you'd like to run. Or 
you can start with your smart list. You can pick the appropriate fields, making sure that you're including the ID column so that you can guarantee a match when you bring it back into Giftworks. You can export it and save it to an Excel file, make the changes over in Excel, and then use the import capability to bring it back into Giftworks, making sure that you select the option that's appropriate under matching existing donors and making sure you're matching your ID field with the donor ID field. And that's how you can use Giftworks to make global batch or bulk changes to your donor information. So thanks for taking time to watch, and I wish you the best with Giftworks. Bye-bye.